Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Today, Ripple released their fourth quarter 2021 XRP markets report. Ripple, of course, continues to be the most transparent company in all of crypto. You don't see this type of report from the Ethereum Foundation or consensus uh, regarding the cryptocurrencies that they're associated with. No, 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 of course you do not. Uh, but uh, Ripple is paving the way, and they get berated by it from uh, you know the Bitcoin maxi troll types out there, the ideological thinkers. That uh, <laughs> funny enough, they're they're against XRP because it's the bankers kind, because uh, it's being utilized by one developer building on top of the XRP ledger, Ripple, uh, to to help the legacy financial system. Yet, quite comically, these Bitcoin maxi trolls who are uh, just a bunch of room temperature cottage cheese eaters. That's their favorite food, by the way. They, uh, they, they're they actually embracing the true banker's coin, I would argue, which is Bitcoin, which is being embraced by J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs. That's the banker's coin. And I don't even have a problem with that. It's just hypocritical is all. You know, when do you see uh, <laughs> Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan talking about XRP? Not very frequently, right? It's all about Bitcoin. Uh, so look, in this report, I, the, 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 some of the things found in here were a bit more interesting than I typically find in uh, in, in their in Ripple's XRP markets report, including, and I'll tell you a few at the, at the top here, um, they actually covered uh, all the XRP ledger airdrops that have been occurring, including the uh, the number, the total number that were, and it's, it's a pretty big number. There were a lot of airdrops in Q4. They talk about that. Um, oh, they also cited that uh, crypto businesses are about to sue the SEC. Um, and I don't mind reporting that. Look, it's if you're operating in this industry, it's, uh, I mean, it's it's messy, folks. It's just messy. You know, it's like fight, fight, fight back against the SEC or you, you, you potentially won't be able to exist in the United States or at least in such a diminished capacity that it won't be remotely appealing to, to operate in the United States if, if uh, SEC Supreme Leader and Dictator Kim jong Gary gets his way. Um, also, uh, Ripple did, and I'm, I was glad to see this. I was wondering if they were going to talk about this. I thought the answer would be yes, and I was not disappointed. Uh, Ripple did acknowledge the XRP ledger's scaling issues, which I was highlighting uh, mostly in early December of, uh, of last year, 2021. And, uh, and also, Ripple's XRP sales are up over 100%. But uh, it's, this is not this is not such a bad thing. There's there's completely good rational reasons for this. Three in particular that came to mind immediately. So anyway, I'm going to run through this report. Actually, uh, you can hear that printed up uh, this report here and uh, highlighted the parts that I found to be most interesting and made a couple notes and uh, going to run through that. But uh, I do want to be clear at the outset, I don't have a financial background of any kind. I'm not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. And I, I do like that they include this, and they typically write this at the beginning of, of each report. Uh, <laughs> they wrote, as an XRP holder, Ripple believes proactive communication and transparency are part of being a responsible stakeholder. Moreover, Ripple urges others in the industry to build trust, foster open communications, and raise the bar industry-wide. So this is why I was commenting on this, this concept at the outset of the video, because Ripple really takes some heat because the data is out there because Ripple makes it transparent, and all these other companies out there operate in darkness and so you can't go after them because there's no specifics to attack them or attacks come out after the fact and i'll say this too not not only that even when facts do come out with regarding other platforms like specifically the ethereum foundation they don't get berated nearly as much as ripple does like there's true disdain from bitcoin maxis out there against ripple and xrp specifically and it is completely irrational it is illogical and i want to be uh, disassociated with those humans uh, I, I, like, look, I'm pro-Bitcoin. I just the type of person that is that ideologically driven in the space and just wants to tear down other projects and there's one coin to rule them all. No, I don't really want anything to do with them, honestly. That is that it doesn't that is not the world that I want to live in. And you can think back to like the Ethereum Foundation, for example, Vitalik Buterin, two years after the fact, admitted that the Ethereum Foundation, in an interview he admitted this, uh, the Ethereum Foundation sold 70,000 ETH at the top of the last market cycle when uh, Ethereum ran up to somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,400 bucks. And I don't remember. I don't remember if Ethereum started the market cycle. Maybe in like 
was what was it 10 bucks i have to go back and look it was really low so it was a, a monstrous climb and that's super duper fantastic and i don't have a problem with them selling assets that they own i'm just saying that they're treated differently and there's not sufficient transparency same for joe lubin running consensus he he still won't tell people how much eth consensus holds and and how much is being sold how much he's dumping on the market but he critiques ripple and it just is not it's not rational it is what it is all right, um, moving on. Another, and this is, uh, here I can move down to the next page if you guys, for any of you that are actually looking on the screen. Where is this? Another unique, did I pass it? Don't tell me I passed it. Another you. sorry folks, for you listening and not looking at the screen. Here, I'll just, another unique, there we go. Where, where, to, where to go? There it is, jeez. I was right on the screen and I missed it. Sorry about that, folks. Anyway, another unique mark, uh, market activity in Q4 was the proliferation of airdrops for token distribution. Uh, airdrops happened across ac- across <laughs> across several blockchains, including Cosmos, Ethereum, Solana, Avalanche, and XRP Ledger. Uh, yeah, and, and so and there's there have always been airdrops, but there's definitely been a notable uptick. And the XRP Ledger, including on the XRP Ledger, and the XRP Ledger has always had this this functionality, this ability baked in from the beginning, but there were almost zero airdrops for most of the last last decade. And then at the tail end of 2021, it's like, boom, explosion, which is what uh, led to the scaling issues, part of it anyway, uh, which I'll get to in a moment. But uh, anyway, they write here. Um, on the XRP ledger, there were over 31 million trust line transactions and more than 50 different tokens were airdropped in Q4. 50 different tokens, folks. <laughs> Can you imagine? Look, I, look I, I think most of these, I, I'd be willing to bet, don't do a damn thing. I'm sure some of them are scammy, potentially rug pulls. They're, they're doing garbage. And I don't like the scammy stuff. There's a way we can clamp down on that great. But other than that, I would say... It's ridiculous fine. It seems like that on the surface, but this is the market figuring out what deserves to be here. It's, it is a messy process. It's a long process, and a lot of people lose money along the way. The same thing happened during the dot-com boom and bust. You know, there was a huge bubble in the trillions, multi-trillion dollar uh, dot-com bubble uh, you know, a couple decades ago, which ultimately burst, and it did, and lots of capital was lost. But what rose from the ashes of that? Well, the likes of Amazon and many other companies that have grown tremendously over over the decades. And more companies were, were created after the bubble burst, too. So there's all sorts of opportunity there. Um, I, I'm just saying, um, I actually don't have a problem. I don't think it's bad, and I, I don't care all these, even with the, the, like Bitcoin forks. People say, ah, see, this is proof Bitcoin's garbage. It's just forking. And who can, no, 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 no. It's the market figuring it out. And if, if, if the forks are garbage, then people just won't put money in them. That's fine. Like that That's how it should be. Same for these XRP ledger airdrops. If they're crap, they're crap. And so I only participated in a few of these airdrops. I, was just, I saw them coming down the pipe. I barely even talked about them on the channel because I'm just like, it's too much. What am I going to do, like, thoroughly research this? And then what? how much is there to research? You have limited information for most of them. And I was just sitting thinking, like, okay, maybe there's a diamond in the rough here. But I'm just going to have to, to risk missing it because I'm not going to deal with 50 freaking airdrops and the tax implications. And most of them really, truly probably are garbage. Um, but I did participate in this next one that they talk about. Uh, the Syllogenic airdrop was one of the more high-profile airdrops on the XRP ledger, establishing more than 340,000 trust lines. Um, and I can talk about that more in a separate video, but um, I will tell you the airdrop's complete, and I checked, and I did receive my Syllogenic tokens. Um, there are some people that may not have, but again, I'll just have to share that for another video, because there there is a path forward, but you're going to have to act somewhat quickly. Um, moving on, NFT Spotlight. Uh, the industry continues to see Solana-based marketplaces chip away at Ethereum's dominance as high gas fees plague both creators and traders. And so, yeah, most NF- NFT transactions historically have been on the Ethereum blockchain, but they're rather costly. Ethereum is not sufficiently fast and definitely, that's not even the biggest problem. The biggest problem, really, as far as it <laughs> pertains to long-term adoption of this, outrageous fees, these gas fees for these transactions uh, you don't have that with the XRP ledger because XRP specifically was built for payments and it's blazing fast. So check this out. This is what Ripple wrote. Q4 saw heightened interest in launching NFTs on the XRP ledger as projects uh, issued IOUs on the XRP ledger that would later be redeemed for non-fungible tokens. With the release of XLS20D, 
On uh, NFT DevNet in January 2020, a standard that provides access to XRP Ledger native NFT capabilities, developers have an accessible and reliable environment to experiment with NFTs on the XRP Ledger. And so look, I, I don't have all the specifics on this, but I, I can say in terms of uh, NFTs being adopted on the XRP Ledger, yes, obviously there's a built-in decentralized exchange. You can have a representation of anything on there, including an NFT. Uh, but uh, my understanding is since obviously there's not built-in smart contract capabilities and other things that might be useful with uh, you know the, the moderation and proliferation of you know about NFTs on the XRP ledger, given that that's not there natively on the XRP ledger, um, this XLS20D release that they're talking about here provides a lot of that functionality that would be needed. So in order for that to be adopted within the XRP ledger, you would need 80% approval from validator nodes to implement this, this NFT upgrade. But the point is on the payment side, it's already there. That base layer that matters, that's 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 important and it's it's already there. Um, next year. Oh yeah, take a look at this. This is fun. Freaking SEC, man. The freaking SEC. Just they they are so so happy and i'm glad to see that potentially others are going to come back i don't know check this out sec commissioner hester purse expressed her disappointment over the absence of crypto on sec chair gary ginsler's regulatory regulatory agenda now think about that that's one of five one of five commissioners hester purse and she's one of the individuals that did vote on whether or not to bring a legal action against ripple and fox business network has reported that uh, she did not vote in favor to bring uh, any sort of legal action against Ripple, and she's highly critical, rightfully so, I'd say, of uh, SEC Supreme Leader and Dictator Kim jong Gary and his regulatory agenda. And so there was nothing in his regulatory agenda specifically about crypto, but then you look at how they're, he's behaving in the real world. He's going after exchanges, going after DeFi, going after ICOs, everybody under the sun. And, and fine, there's some stuff that shouldn't be there. I'm not saying they shouldn't do anything, but... Uh, my gosh, they're trying to take over the entire crypto space, and it's it's become onerous at this point. That can't stand. And so Ripple then wrote the following. The SEC also continued its pattern of delaying or denying spot Bitcoin ETF proposals, much to the frustration of industry officials, some of whom may be preparing to file suit uh, against the SEC over its position. Now, that I would like to see, because I, I think that a, a spot Bitcoin ETF should have been approved a long, long time ago. Uh, and so it's just so funny to see that there's no, there's no, n nothing crypto related in this, in, in Gary Gensler's regulatory agenda, but he talks about it constantly and he's bringing the hammer down, but again, no guidance, nothing on the agenda officially, just bringing the hammer down and regulating through enforcement. It's rather repulsive if you ask me. All right. Uh, then there's this, um, let me scroll down ripple net end of year momentum. Take a look at this. And now we're talking about ripples XRP sales. And this is fascinating here. And I want to explain to you, uh, why we're seeing this uptick in, uh, in ripple sales. And it's not a bad thing. Check, check a look, take a look. Uh, 2021 was ripples most successful and lucrative year to date as global momentum skyrocketed with customer demand, despite the headwinds from the sec. The number of transactions on RippleNet more than doubled with a payment volume run rate of over $10 billion. This is a testament to the product, considering Ripple parted ways with MoneyGram, its largest customer, immediately after the SEC filed its lawsuit against Ripple. <clears throat> Pause and think about that. <clears throat> Incredible RippleNet growth, including on-demand liquidity, by the way, despite losing their largest customer, which was ut utilizing on-demand liquidity. That really speaks to the degree to which this, this is growing. And like, the whole world is fighting against Ripple despite them having an incredible business idea to help the legacy financial system. Because think about it, think about it. Ripple can't do that much to control XRP liquidity. They can do almost nothing, almost nothing. They're not in charge of it. Uh, the, the whole market moves in tandem. And so th there are two parts that matter when it comes to providing um, on-demand liquidity quarter opportunity, uh, you know, you need to have a sufficient blend of price and liquidity and liquidity is more important than price because think about this. I don't care if XRP is a thousand dollars, pick your crazy high number. If nobody's buying and selling it, there's no liquidity. And so you can't facilitate on-demand liquidity transactions anyway. So yeah, price matters. You know, you want a blend of it, but the little liquidity. And so that's, that's a part that Ripple really can't do a whole lot about. So as the, as the entire asset class grows, 
uh, and liquidity increases, prices also rise, of course. Over time, that's historically what they've done anyway. Uh, that opens the opportunity for additional corridors. But when you're thinking about multi-trillion dollar global flows in terms of settlement every single day, XRP doesn't have sufficient a sufficient blend of price and liquidity to just like, you know, snap of a finger, take that over. But that's okay. That's that's not a harsh critique. That's just recognizing reality. These things take time. It, this doesn't happen overnight. But then at some point, and this is if you just look at technology bell curves, you see a slow adoption. But then at some point, there's this inflection point where it almost where it just like starts scaling up. Just Google technology bell curve. You'll see what I'm talking about. And then the masses adopt it. And, um, and so we're, we're approaching a point where we can see that uplift because there's true utility to be had here. Uh, and then the Ripple also writes, with over 20 payout markets for on-demand liquidity, most recently adding the Middle East, RippleNet continues to see more global demand for the product. Most notably, APAC continues to be one of the largest contributors to on-demand liquidity volume of RippleNet, more than doubling in 2021. Uh, last quarter... Total XRP sales by Ripple, net of purchases, were 717.07 million versus 491.74 million USD the previous quarter. So when they're talking about net of purchases, uh, they're factoring the total sales and purchases. That's what they're talking about there in that sentence. Uh, Ripple continued to engage in sales to improve the on-demand liquidity experience of certain customers, eliminating the need for pre-funding at exchanges and enabling instant global payments. <clears throat> As has been the case since Q4 2019, Ripple did not conduct programmatic sales in Q4. Yes, as far as programmatic, I don't remember exactly how Ripple defines that, and they never define it in their market reports, their quarterly market reports, not that I've seen ever anyway. But my understanding is that programmatic sales would basically be any sale of XRP that isn't specifically related to on-demand liquidity and the liquidity needs therein. That's that's per that's my understanding at this point. If somebody has a, a better definition of what that is, please drop in the comment section below, but that's my understanding at this point. And so um, you can see here, here I'll just highlight this. Here's the, t the total sales. So you can see the total sales for on uh, re related on-demand liquidity up over 100% from Q3 to Q4. Uh, went, went from roughly 491 million to 1,039 million, because that's in thousand of, uh, so, be, well, so that means over a billion anyway, because they wrote that in dollars and millions. Uh, and so um, big jump, and you might be like, oh, huh, why is that happening? Well, a few things here. Uh, global XRP volume, um, it's, it's substantial. So it's 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 going to be a, a percentage of volume. Um, it's so the volume's actually a hair down. But um, what what happened was, if you look at just the um, the net sales as a percentage, the percentage was a, a, a like a smidge higher. Here I can just highlight it down here. Uh, yeah, here we go. That's it. Net sales as percent of total volume in Q3 it was 026 percent. And uh, in Q4, 0.43%. Uh, and just to be clear, when you're talking about such a minuscule percentage, this this is the reason that you're not seeing Ripple's sales impact the XRP sales. You're not seeing them impact the global price of XRP because it's tiny. It's a fraction of a percent. That's nowhere near enough to have to make global markets dip, which is why this narrative that Ripple's just dumping on the markets, blah, 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 it's, it's just complete garbage as if it were having some sort of measurable impact. It's just not. Um, and then also on-demand liquidity adoption increase. So that's that's one of the biggest pieces of this because they are, and I don't, I'm don't i not privy to the nuts and bolts of why they're moving and when. Uh, we aren't. They're a private company. They're still very transparent, but they're a private company. But uh, on-demand liquidity adoption results in the necessity of, of shuffling the, this around. And so Ripple having the uh, you know, large holdings of XRP that they have, they're, they're helping to facilitate all of this. And, um, and, and also consider this, Ripple, again, Ripple bought XRP. They did not just sell it. So if you're looking at the sales net of purchases, so that just means factoring in the purchases here, you can see that uh, there are, again, 491 million a dollars in, in sales in Q3 and then in Q4, if you if you once you factor in the total purchases, uh, there were it, was, it came out to just 717 million. So not not that big, folks. It's good to see, but see again. It's good to see this because the utility matters and will win, win the day. That's been my investment thesis for years. The utility doesn't sufficiently matter today, but it sure as hell does matter. And money will ultimately flow to those cryptocurrencies that are useful, solving real problems for real people. And so this is one use case. Ripple's one participant in the ecosystem, and yes, they happen to be the most 
famous in the ecosystem, I think it's fair to argue, but uh, not the only one. And they're finding success here. So if, given this, the, the fact that this is the case and that there are other use cases that are being adopted currently, as long as this continues to be the case, I'm going to be very bullish for XRP for the long haul, which doesn't mean that I won't sell along the way because I'm, I have to consider my own risk exposure. But in terms of whether or not I think XRP will continue to be worth more in the future, that's separate from um, do I have too much risk exposure in case I'm wrong? You know, that's a separate equation. Um, all right. And then there's also this. Yeah, here we go. Um, uh, sorry, folks. One sec here. Yeah, let me scroll down a little bit further. Stability issues. I'm glad that they talked about this. Um, I would have been disappointed. I figured they would, but I would have been disappointed if they didn't because it can't all be all the positive and good news. And it, it isn't. Like, that's not what these reports are. It's just that there usually is good news. That's why it might start to feel like that because it's mostly good news um, other than the SEC nonsense. But, uh, but here they highlighted this. Uh, you can see stability issues. They wrote uh, the following. On November 3rd, the XRP ledger halted for approximately 15 minutes in response to several validators experiencing issues. Unlike some other blockchains, the XRP ledger network recovered automatically and without any human intervention, as it is designed to do, resuming operation, albeit under a higher than normal load. This resulted in elevated transaction fees and a large transaction queue. That said, elevated fees were still minuscule by comparison to other blockchain fees, remaining at fractions of a penny. So, so regular levels would be 0.000012 XRP. That would be the cost for a normal transaction. And it was elevated to 0 0.000240, which is what's on your screen uh, right here where I'm waving the mouse right there. Uh, it... it Negligible doesn't matter. Doesn't freaking matter. It's up. It's up. But negligible. Well, it was anyway at the time. But but uh, check this out. Together with community members and infrastructure operators, developers worked 24/7 to identify several bugs and develop key optimizations, improving both performance and stability. As server operators upgraded to version 1.8.2 of the XRP Ledger software, server software, the transaction queue backlog was worked through, transaction fees returned to normal levels, and the network stabilized. There you go. So anyway, I'm glad they addressed that. Now, I don't want to go into it any further. It's not the purpose of this video. I'm just glad they highlighted it, but I've covered that in great detail. I've made several videos on that topic. Uh, it, was, it was a very serious issue, but it was never a doomsday scenario. And it was taken seriously, and like I stated when, you know, those unfortunate instances were happening, there's a path forward, and that's very clear at this point. The XRP ledger is just fine, frankly. So there you go. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon Lambo.